Bless has such a depth to it. You have what it looks like at night when the light is shining on the surface and it's, there's no backlighting. And then you have the daytime where you have sunlight streaming in and just making everything glow. And then you've got the rainy day where it's, you know, it's kind of backlit, but it's still kind of flat. It's like the same piece of artwork changes dimension throughout the day. I think and I find it fascinating. I actually came to stained glass from a fairly roundabout way. You know, and I went to school for architecture. I took lots of art classes, but glass was never a medium that was either offered or that I really, you know, was that interested in at first. And I just happened to be like, well, you know, maybe I should try this. I got time. And so I took the class. And I absolutely loved it. It was everything that I loved about architecture and everything I loved about art all mixed up in this one medium that has the ability to change colors, different lights, you know, but at the same time, it's structured. So you really have to think through everything to get to it. And that's, I just, it's, I love the process. This window will go in the, a side light, which is next to a door. The inspiration is actually from their view out their door. So they have these gorgeous birch trees that kind of mask the, the neighborhood. I take an inspiration and abstract it. So you get the idea and the feel. It's more of an impression rather than a you know, realistic version. For, for as a glass artist, I have a fairly distinctive style. My pieces are very recognizable, I think, because they're very linear, they're very abstract, but at the same time, you can actually see the image that inspired the piece was. A lot of the glass that I use is fracture streamer glass, and this is an example of a, like, kind of a spring or summer type one with greens and a little bits of yellow. And, and this is another gorgeous piece that's got, looks green. It looks, you know, like it's two parts of green, but when it, the light hits behind it, it actually has a very amber tone to it. So it's kind of a, it's, it's very warm. Because I don't work from a pattern, I'm working based on a very loose grid system. The lead channel actually looks like a H and the glass actually fits in there like that. But you can see the depth of there. You have to take that into account when you're cutting it. So you can't just cut a one inch plus one inch and, and then cut one that's exactly two inches and have it actually fit because nothing would line up if you actually did that. It's very geometric, so, but it's also very intuitive. So when I'm working on here, I can just throw a piece in where I think it might need to go. So it, it, is, it is a playing with it. One of the things that's really, that I, I think attracts me to working with the glass in general is because it's more mathematical and my background is an architect, I think you can, you know, you can kind of see that influence with the geometrics in my work. The best part about finishing the piece isn't isn't the actual end end. It's when you first hold it up to the light, you just get that little bit of a glimpse and that's just the best part. That's just totally the best part. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota.